I already fucked it up. I'm Allie. Welcome to Mythic Melancholy. Today we are here for the March anticipated releases. I gave you January and February last month. It's now February. It's now time for the March ones. And yes, we have to do this month by month because I apparently got way too into what is coming out this year. As with last time, we probably won't go into detail about any of these books because there's just too many of them. If during this video I keep looking over here, I had to set my camera up at my computer because I am not going to remember all the details about all these books or anything about any of the books without the help of the internet. So I have my computer pulled up right here so that we can go ahead and talk about these. First up, coming out on March 1st, we have The Unforgettable Light. I already fucked it up. First up on March 1st, we have The Unforgettable Alexandra Shaw by A. Lloyd Spanton. Gorgeous cover. This is a YA thriller about a girl who accidentally killed her father, some sort of accident, something happened when she was younger, and so she just wants to move on with her life, get away from her past, and she moves to a new school where this boy is like, hey, I know you, uh, but not only did your father die in the accident, so did you. I'm sorry, what? And then apparently something weird is going on with the school and so she has to figure out all this stuff. Maybe she's not even alive. It sounds very interesting. It also says it's only 270 pages, so it's rather short. So this one just seems like it will be a really interesting thriller, although it could also be really lame because a lot of YA thrillers um, just don't hit the mark, but some of them do, so could go either way. Then on March 7th, we have The Moth Keeper by Kay O'Neill. This one I just had to add to this list because Kay O'Neill wrote the Tea Dragon Society books and this one has moths. I like moths. And it's another middle grade graphic novel. It'll be cute. It's about moths it's by the author of the Tea Dragon ones. I don't know what it's about other than there's moths. Then also on March 7th, we have The God of Endings by Jacqueline Holland. This sounds like a literary fiction, sort of, possibly vampire-ish book. It's about an immortal woman who has to grapple with the fact that when she was younger, her grandfather decided to make her immortal like him. So now she's dealt with decades and decades, centuries of all sorts of turmoil and things going on. She works as a teacher right now and she has this growing hunger. So, you know, that's where I'm thinking like vampires. It just sounds like a different sort of take on this sort of situation. And I've been wanting to read more literary fiction. Something about this one just caught my eye. Yet another March 7th release is The Last Beekeeper by Julie Carrick Dalton. This is a dystopian literary fiction where all of the bees have disappeared from the world. This woman father is known as sort of the last beekeeper. She decides she's going to go back to this like ranch thing that they had and try to find his mythic research that's kind of never really been found, doesn't really exist. And when she gets there she finds there's a bunch of squatters living there because the world is a dystopian world and they become kind of a found family for her. She ends up seeing a bee and for some reason, people who claim to see honeybees still alive are silenced. So this is just kind of the journey to figuring out what is going on. Her, I'm sure, figuring out a lot about herself and her family as well, since it is also more literary and has that found family aspect. I'm really intrigued by it, not only because of, again, wanting to read more literary fiction, but because it's just an interesting concept about what is going on with these bees. Yet again on March 7th, we have A Witch's Guide to Fake Dating a Demon by Sarah Hawley. I don't actually know a whole lot about this one. I know it has a cutesy cover. It's a romance. I like the fake dating trope quite a bit, and this one just sounds fun. It just sounds like it's going to be a good time. It could also be not so great because some of these ones I found when I picked them up, and they're just kind of this 
style cover with these kinds of vibes. They can either be really fun or they can just be really bland. Basically, it sounds like our main character is a witch who accidentally summons a demon and then for some reason they fake date. Moving on to March 14th, we have Feed Them Silence by Lee Mandelo. This is a sort of speculative sci-fi novella and I feel like the information we have on this one with the synopsis is not telling us the whole story. I think this one's gonna get kind of weird. This one follows a woman who is a scientist on this research project. With her research she has been able to be in kind with a non-human animal and she does this with a wolf. She can sense what they're sensing, kind of feel what they're feeling, and become one with them in a way. She becomes obsessed with this research and it puts a strain on her relationship with her wife and everyone around her. And then there's some issue with her funders could destroy the wolf that she is connecting with. I, I don't, I don't know. Really, I just don't know. I feel like there's gonna be something real weird. Something real weird is gonna happen. I just get that vibe and that's what I want. Another March 14th relief is Bitter Medicine by Mia Tsai. This is a contemporary fantasy inspired by Chinese myths and it sounds like the Chinese TV dramas with just so much going on. There's so much going on here. It's the descendant of a Chinese god of medicine and then a French elf and they, I don't know, I, there's too much to explain here because the synopsis is saying that she has a murderous older brother, the French elf accidentally cursed some children and he has to do something about this. They both work at like this temp agency and eventually they end up teaming up to go find this descendant's younger brother. I don't know, there's a lot going on here. It sounds like the the sea dramas. And honestly, that sounds amazing to me. We've got another March 14th release, this one being Flower Heart by Katherine Bakewell. I was really taken in by the cover of this one and originally I wasn't going to add it to my anticipated list just because I haven't been feeling the YA fantasy as quite as much lately, but this one just intrigues me. It's described as a cottage core fantasy and I, I mean I got all these little mushrooms on my shirt. I do like the cottage core vibes. so. This one ended up being added here. This one is about a girl who has this magic power that she isn't in total control of, but it's never been dangerous until she ends up making poisonous flowers bloom in a family member of hers. And the only way to save him is to use this spell that takes complete control, which she does not have. So she goes to find her former best friend, who is very different now, and that ends up just kind of catalysting into finding out the darkness that is taking over the world she lives in and how her magic might be the only thing that can save it. We are still on March 14th with A Long Stretch of Bad Days by Mindy McGinnis. Now I have never actually read anything by Mindy McGinnis. I know she wrote A Female of the Species which I hear good things about still to this day even though that one has been out for quite a while and I'm very intrigued to read from this author. When I saw this one come up it just has an interesting storyline. This is another YA thriller about two girls who are a credit short of graduating and they want to you know get out of this small town so they decide to start a podcast because for some reason they can get their school credit that way. I don't know. But they start this podcast looking into this long stretch of bad days that happened in this town where there was a tornado and then there was a flood and then there was a murder and then they obviously discover all sorts of secrets, a town brothel that is hidden, just all sorts of different things. It sounds interesting and I just feel like because it's by this author and I've heard such good things about this author, I'd like to give this one a shot. Moving on to March 21st, we have Luca of the Night Forest by Taylor K. Mezia. She wrote, we free the storm, we feel the storm, we something the storm. Something. Uh, and I really liked that one <laughs> when it came out. So I'm interested in more from this author. This one is a YA fantasy about, uh, well, the synopsis doesn't tell me much. Someone who really wants to protect her sister, even if she has to make a bargain with dark forces. There's also a LGBT romance in here, and I don't know, something about this one just makes me want to read it and also keep an eye out because I might have gotten to be on a book tour for this one coming up in March. 
so I will be reading and reviewing this. Then on March 28th, we have Chlorine by Jade Song. This one sounds really intriguing. It's about a competitive swimmer who is dealing with the pressures of needing to be the best. And she decides the only way to do this is she needs to become a mermaid. This one is described also as being a horror, which is part of what drew me into it because I don't know what's gonna happen here, but I want to know. So this one is one that I'm very, very excited for. I think this is going to be very good, very interesting in the least, and I can't wait for this one. Again, on March 28th, we have A House with Good Bones by T. Kingfisher. This is another author I haven't read anything from, but would really like to, and so I might start with their most recent novel. This is a Southern Gothic, which that right there draws me in. And it is about a girl who goes back to her childhood home to find that the house is not what she remembers and her mom is frightened of everything going on. And so she has to figure out why her mother jumps at everything and is so scared of her own home. But again, some secrets apparently should stay buried. Still on March 28th, we have The Gargoyles Captive by Katie Robert. We all know I'm a sucker for Katie Robber and I'm going to continue reading all of her monster romances. This one is part of her Deal with a Demon series, so it will be about a woman who makes a deal with a demon, ends up in this demon world and has to be basically betrothed to a gargoyle. That's all I know. I don't need to know more. I liked the first one, The Dragon's Bride, quite a bit. Although, there is one thing that I could have wanted a little more of in there. Won't get into that. But, I really want to read the rest of these books and this is the next one coming out. March 28th again, we have Lone Women by Victor Laval. This is a historical fiction western horror. And it sounds very interesting. It is about a woman who some sin of hers ended up making her parents die. And she has this giant steamer trunk that when it's opened, people start to disappear. So she goes out to the west to take advantage of the free land out there. But she's just a lone woman on her own. And then, you know, something will happen with the steamer chest, I'm sure. It sounds really interesting and at first when I saw this one I didn't really know what to think of it I thought it was just more of a western and I'm not a huge fan of westerns but just the combination of things going on here with the fact that it's got the historical fiction aspect and this weird sort of horror aspect with this mysterious steamer trunk and the fact that her parents died and we don't know why and it sounds like it might also be a little bit more literary. I don't know, it's interesting. I'm not sure if it'll be my jam personally, but it sounds very intriguing to me. Of course, still on March 28th, we have Hamra and the Jungle of Memories by Hannah Elkaf. This is apparently a Malaysian retelling of Red Riding Hood, and it follows a girl who her birthday is forgotten, nobody remembers, so she ignores the rules of the jungle that you must always ask permission before entering, and that you should not take things without asking. She does both, and then her dreams are haunted by a were-tiger, and she has to obviously go in and fix what has happened. This one sounds really interesting to me. I really enjoy Asian folklore, and I'm sure this will lean in some capacity on that, as well as twisting the Red Riding Hood story. It sounds very Grimm's fairy tale esque and this one is also a middle grade, if I didn't mention that. Lastly, and again on March 28th, we have Into the Light by Mark Arshiro, which is a LGBT contemporary YA thriller. It's got a lot of genres listed here. This one is about a boy who basically was pushed out of his own family for some reason, but he doesn't really remember his past, and it ends up sounding like he gets himself into a kind of cult situation. He's staying with this family that has a whole bunch of different rules and things going on, and he's trying to figure out why he can't remember his past. And then there is a murder that takes place, and him and the son of this family, who I'm imagining is the love interest, kind of have to start to figure things out. This one claims to be very twisty and have a lot of different things going on. It very much interests me, mainly because of the culty aspect. I really enjoy books that have that kind of thing in them. So whenever a book claims to have something that sounds cultish, that 
right there intrigues me and I want to read it. All right, that is all the releases I have to talk about for March. Again, make sure to check out in when it actually is March, my April releases video. And if you are excited for any of these, let me know. If I missed any of the ones that you're most excited for, let me know that as well. Make sure to like and then comment that stuff down below. Subscribe if you want to see more of my face and I will see you in the next one.